Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac Edward Plus. We're doing pretty well. I mean, we did lose one in the middle of this, uh, I wouldn't really call it a streak, but you know what I mean. Dude, stats are okay. Rate of fire needs some work. VX, FC, 0, 0, K, J. We won't know more until we play a little bit, but our damage stat is in a, a decent spot. Anyway. It's nice to get a fresh start in video. You don't necessarily need to be talking about chess at all times. I don't know, man. Ooh, I'm just saying how I feel. I'm not gonna give you any more of that Kanye West quote. It's problematic for a number of different reasons. <laughs> but anyway. Um... I don't know, dude. This is one of those episodes where I wouldn't, you know, is, is bad media uh, mojo to start something and be like, I don't know what we're gonna talk about. We're just gonna let it ride, you know? But kind of just seeing how I feel right now. We're planning the docket here on the afternoon. February has gone by crazy fast. And I don't just mean that as a, a joke. You know, about how, like, it is the shortest month. You ever think about that? And now, okay, I've, I've, he, he, I've sniffed out a lead conversationally. Um, you ever think about, like, uh, the, the year is very inelegant. You know, you ever go to, like, a, a store and the aisles are just laid out wrong? Or you use an app and you're like, you know, the, the setting... Oh, you know, a you know, very good example is uh, in video games when you're looking for subtitles. Where do subtitles go? The top level settings menu, gameplay, display, or audio. You know, everybody's kind of got a different opinion on that. But it seems like there should be kind of like a universal design constant that is like, you know... They go in gameplay settings. I don't know, where, where would I put them? I'm not going to get in an argument. I think you could just put subtitles in every menu if you wanted to make it as easy as possible, but I, I look for it in gameplay first, then audio, then visual, but whatever. And I like subtitles on at all times, because I can read faster than people can talk. Anyway, we don't need to go down that road. Um, but I will say, I'm, I'm getting offended on other people's behalf, which is always a little bit dangerous. But I've been watching this uh, documentary on Amazon Prime about the Lorena and John Wayne Bobbitt case. Um, and if you haven't heard about it, just Google it. I don't even want to touch the possible Google DeepMind situation we got going on with some of the words involved in this case. But anyway, you know, people are talking. It was a dark and stormy night. Everything's fine. Then some guy gets on the... He starts talking and he's got like a southern drawl. Man, dang old... Found it in the dang old woods, y'all. And they give him subtitles. Like, nothing... I don't want to... I, I'm hesitant with how I want to approach this. Not for, like, the reason that it might be controversial, but I get that it's, like, a usability thing. Especially, like, what I don't want to be like is, I feel bad for this guy, and then people are like, well, I have trouble hearing, so when people have what I would determine to be a strong accent, it is kind of, uh... You know, I, I appreciate having the subtitles. Look, I have subtitles on by default at all times, but, uh... You know, the rare occasion that I don't, like, for example, I downloaded the Amazon Prime app and didn't turn subtitles on right away because I was using it to fall asleep. Um, yo, I'll take the Halo. I just look at it and I go, I'm, I'd be offended if they, you know, I'm a native English speaker, born in an English-speaking country, and then they had me, uh, you know, they're hey, can we interview you for this documentary? And they're like, whoa, dude, slow down. <laughs> We're going to have to make a transcript of this one. And I'm reminded, like, uh, if you haven't seen The Staircase, it's probably my favorite true crime documentary. But, you know, the, it, it takes place, I think, in Virginia. Uh, and there is a, an Asian expert witness. He's like, he literally wrote, like, the textbook on blood spatter analysis back in the early 1990s. And, you know, when he gets on stage, he speaks. And he has uh, an accent, but he's pretty intelligible. And, uh, the jury is like, man, <laughs> I didn't know what that guy was saying, and I just assumed he was talking down to me. And I'm like, ah, we're all doomed. <laughs> we are absolutely screwed. Anyway, where was I going with this? I forgot. Subtitles, right? I don't know, I've, I've lost it. Oh, what I was, okay, now I remember now. Um... What I was going to say is, 
You gotta think. I, we could never do it. The world is so... I mean, it's one of those things where you're just stuck with it. It's like being born with a, a shortened Achilles tendon. You know, you're gonna have an interesting gait for the rest of your life. Uh, and, and at this point, it's too much work to change. Not too much work in a bad way, but like, you know, so many systems are founded on it, you know? Here's what I mean by this, because I'm talking in metaphors. Please give me a key as well. Um, you gotta think there would be a more elegant way to work uh, a calendar into existence than January to December. Some of the months have 30 days, some of the months have 31 days, and one of the months has 28 days. I'm not saying it's non-functional. It works. There's no d debating that, I think, you know? I don't go, like, you know, through my life thinking, Oh, this day oh I thought it was gonna be February 29th, but then it's actually March 1st. But you gotta think if they were reworking it. You know, if it was designed by, like, a think tank from the ground up, they probably would not... You know, if you came to, like, the board meeting and you're like, Okay, hear me out. So we're gonna divide the year up into 12 months. It's 365 days, we're gonna divide it up into 12 months. Okay, they're like, so far so good. 12, nice round number. 12 donuts in a in a dozen, you know. Uh, cheaper by the dozen, starring Steve Martin and Bonnie Hunt. They have 12 kids, you know, there's our names for the month right there. Um, and then they go, okay, but here's the thing, you know, 365 days is kind of an odd number. So some of the days have 30, some of the months have 30 days, some of the months have 31. And you're like, you know what? That seems like a, a reasonable compromise to make. You know, it's an odd number. 365 doesn't divide evenly by 12. I understand you got to do a little bit of mental fudging to get it work, get it working, I should say. And then they go, okay, but hear me out. It's also a little jacked up because February, I don't know. We're just going to give it 28 days, like just because. That's when I think people would start to be like, well, instead of giving February 28 days, why don't you just give it like 30 days and then uh, take two of the months that have 31 days and take them down to 30 as well. It just seems like an oversimplification. And they'd be like, eh, 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 I'm not done yet. And then on top of that, you know, like the the cycle of Earth going around the, the, the sun, it's a little bit, you know, irregular on an annual basis. So on top of this, once every four years, February, get this, is going to have 29 days. And then people will go, I mean, I guess if you have to, but again, why not just take it on that leap year from from 30 to 31 in that case? And you could be like, this is a 31-day a, a February. And then after that, they'd be like, no, 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 I'm not done. Every 25th leap year, we don't do the leap year. That's, like, literally, that's the system I used to program, like, a lot of my college assignments. It's like my dream, it, like in my head, I'm like, oh, it's so elegantly designed. And then there's a bug, and I'm like, well, you know, I could code around this bug. It's not very elegant, but, you know, it'll work. And unless somebody looks at the code, then they're not going to know. And then that bug introduces, like, one more bug. And I'm like, okay, I can code that bug out of existence, but now it's a real friggin' mess. Like, that's, that's where we're at with the calendar. Is that they're like, okay, man, it would be really cool if we could have, like, 12 equal months. But the months can't actually be equal. And, you know, there's a... Uh, every fourth year, we needed to regain another uh, 24 hours. But except for every, you know, 100th year, we don't need that leap year that year. It's just... And I'm probably ignorant to the science of the calendar design. Just in general, by the way, people who I invented the calendar in the first place and were able to categorize the year in a way that is, like, a useful model to think of, I can't even imagine how smart you had to be to be, like, that level of genius in an era where nobody knew anything <laughs> relative to modern context i mean you know right now in I, I don't think people are necessarily smarter i don't mean that um but information is much easier to come by you know than it was in the year four for example um so back in the day i i just just to come up with a calendar, I think, is a, is a pretty amazing thing. But you gotta think that if they were building it in the modern era, they'd build it a little differently. Don't stand so close to me. Um, I just want a single demon heart. And then I got it. Be careful what you wish for, brother. I'm not mad about it. Again, it's not like it's a... It's a, a real problem that, that that you know on a daily basis i'm like oh this i can't keep my days straight but i am kind of like you know it's inelegant 
Basically, what I'm getting at is that a year ago, I read The Design of Everyday Things by noted uh, uh, author and UI consultant Don Norman, and ever since then, I can't stop calling things out for bad design. I will say, you know, have you ever heard of something called a Norman door? Once you hear about it, you will never stop seeing them in real life. Um, like in your everyday life. A Norman door is a door that doesn't teach you... I might have it inverted here, but the principle is similar. Um, it's a door that doesn't tell you how to open it by way of its design. Here's what I mean by that. If a door has a handle that you can grab... Like, I'm, I'm trying to think, you know like the U-shaped handle? Um, that, you grab that, and then your instinct is basically to do a pulling motion. This is maybe not the best example. If that ends up being a push door, you're like, what's going on here? Now, if a door just has a, uh, you know, a, a steel rectangle on it, you know what I mean? Like a pad, basically? You know that's not going to be a pull door, because how could it be a pull door? You, there's literally nothing for you to grab onto to pull. As a result, it must be a push door. That's a good door. You see a door like that, you don't even have to think about how to open it because there's only one conceivable way to do it. But some, I, the number of times, and I forget Norman doors, dude. Okay, because at the end of the day, it's pretty rare to be like, I can't figure out how to use this door. There's only one or two different, you know, ways to interface with it. The exception is if a door is locked and you can't figure out how to unlock it. Most just have like a turn knob or maybe some kind of latch, but I've been in some weird, you know, bathrooms in other countries and, you know, I get in the bathroom and then I'm like, I don't know how to get out of here. And you just kind of like fiddle with the door for a while. When you, like right now, you're like, you're dumb. I never get trapped in the bathroom. Well, when you start going to, you know, maybe a few hundred different bathrooms a year, your odds of seeing a weird one increase. But anyway, forget Norman doors, dude. Norman showers are the real uh, annoyance. And uh, the Norman shower thing, I mean, I, I don't know if this is a term that I'm popularizing. That's maybe a little bit of a hoity-toity way to describe it. But um, a Norman shower I would describe as a shower that when you see it, you have no idea how to get the shower to work in the way that you want it to work. And it happens all the time in hotels. There's so many different ways that, like, I'll regale you with a few right off the bat. How does my shower work? It has a lever faucet, so you tilt the lever towards you, and then you pull up on the, uh, on the faucet that comes out of, like, the bathtub section. And then the water starts coming out of the shower head. What are some other ways? Uh, you have a hot water tap and a cold water tap, and then you pull on something, and then they start coming out of the... The water starts coming out of the shower head. There was the one that we had in... Uh, when we were in San Francisco checking out the new EDF game. You know how, what that one is? You turn on the water via the lever faucet, and then you grab a little irregular ring where the water comes out. You pull it straight down, and all of a sudden... Uh, the water starts coming out of the shower head. We had another one. We were staying in Seattle one time um, for, for a PAX. Hold on. I just wanted to make sure I didn't get tagged on this room. Um, I actually called down to the front desk. I was defeated. A grown man defeated by a shower. I just wanted to get clean and not stink up the joint. I called the uh, front desk. Front desk said, yeah, it's a little weird. What you do is you, uh, you turn on the water and then there's like a, a silver circle. And you grab the silver circle and pull it away from the wall. Why? What's wrong with the the normal strategy? Or like, I mean, as normal is kind of a weighted word. But you know what I mean? What's wrong with the conventional model? Why do we need so many different ways? And none of them are, well, I guess I wouldn't say none of them. Some of them are in my opinion, so inelegantly designed. If any, I, here's the thing. It's too easy. I truly believe. I, I have enough self-confidence. I am stupid in some areas of my life, smart in others, average in a lot, okay? But I'm not abnormally dumb. I, in my personal opinion, at least. But of course, that's what someone who is abnormally dumb might say. Um, if you own a hotel and you have, you know, I don't know, 500 or 600 showers in your hotel 
you really want to be fielding a few calls a day about how to use the shower like that's the kind of thing that adds up what's wrong with the basic you know turn the taps pull the button situation i just don't understand it's it's all, i'm not saying they are uniquely designed to irritate me i'm more just saying like i i do think that some of them are just like yeah let's just mess with them Hey, you know how 95% of showers in North America are like you turn a tap and then you pull on like a weird little button sort of thing or you push a button in and then the shower turns on? I was thinking like this time we'd put uh, like a little whack-a-mole game and when you turn the taps on, the mole pops out and you hit it with a mallet and then the water comes out of the shower head. What's the point? The one in San Francisco was particularly annoying because uh, just prior to... Uh, trying to get the shower to work and, and having to have the maintenance guy come up and be like, uh, you know, oh yeah, you just pull on this little ring right here. What, you've never seen the ring shower? Um, you know, we, we had called the maintenance guy up like five minutes earlier and been like, hey, we can't figure out how to get the drain to go uh, to plug up in the sink so that we can actually fill the sink with water. And then he came up and was like, yeah, it's broken. <laughs> so you're like... We're using the shower. You're trying to figure out how the shower works. We're like, is this... Oh, I almost walked right into that for no reason whatsoever. We're trying to figure out, like, is this another case of, you know, broken shower? Or is this a case of, uh, you know, the shower is just impossible to understand how to use? In general, whenever possible, I think the design of something should indicate its intended function. You know? You know what's a good example of that? Slot machine. Slot machine has a coin slot. I mean, they're more modern, I guess, in today's day and age. But, you know, the, the prototypical slot machine, it has a coin slot and a lever. What could you possibly misinterpret about this situation? You know? The lever also, it gives you good feedback. You pull on it, it goes... Ka -chung 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 -chung. You know? I think that's an example of a... You know, I wouldn't necessarily say, isn't that good for society? I'm just saying, like... Uh, you know, as, as far as machines go, the slot machine is an elegantly designed item, in my personal opinion. I'm not that passionate about design in the sense of, like, you know, aesthetics. But I am interested in design in the sense of usability. I see it with apps all the time, as well. Um, you know, design doesn't have to be physical. It can also be uh, digital. You probably see it in games all the time. One thing that we already talked about is... is putting a setting in the menu where it seems like it doesn't belong. But there's so many other examples. I think digitally, you know, right? For the first part of this, you might not be on my side. You might be like, well, I see what you're getting at, but it sounds like you're just dumb. And, you know, why didn't you try pulling the ring on the shower? Fair enough, you know? I mean, not fair enough, but let's move on. Um, but in video games, sometimes you'll have things like... Uh, I mean, there's like a, a very... Uh, I don't want to say famous, but a popular kind of like bad programming challenge, which is uh, how to program like the worst possible volume slider. So you can have a volume slider that is like a, a combo box, for example, like a drop down menu where you go, hey, select volume, and then you click on the arrow and then it has like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 or something like that. Or, you know, um, I mean, the typical volume slider you would think of is it's basically just a scale from 0 to 100, right? That you can slide a an indicator across. Or you could have like a, hey, volume, and then there's like five checkboxes. None, quiet, medium, loud, deafening. You know, these 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 are examples of like deliberately terrible design, obviously. I, I just don't think I run as great enough to justify doing those. I see it in, uh, in games all the time. You know, when you're looking for something and you can't find it in, in a game or an app. Like, for example, if you're looking for, um, if you're looking for where to change your password, what button would you press on an app? What, what menu would you try to get to? Probably like account security, right? It's kind of, and I'm, I'm getting into some minutia for sure, but I would be annoyed. I'd get over it, you know, again, the society, we got bigger problems. But if I, if I was like, hey, I want to change my password, you know, and then, uh, it isn't in account security, but instead it's like account preferences. I'd be like, my my password is not a preference. My preferences are, you know, my my time zone, you know, what the theme is, you know, are we using dark mode or something like that? Anyway, 
I'm just saying. You know, I, I think, for the most part, companies and, and developers do a pretty good job uh, in the digital world. And there's, you know, standards and practices by which they adhere to. Obviously, we're going to go with uh, Book of the Dead here. But in the physical world, happens all the time. Another example I see all the time um, is if you're in a restaurant and you go to the bathroom. And, you know, there will be two bathrooms. Sometimes, so simple. There's a universal emoji symbol for man and a universal emoji symbol for women. Never in my life have I ever gone into the bathroom I did not wish to go into as a result of this. Or, they'll hit you with an M, or they'll hit you with a W. No problem. Or it'll say, you know, man on one and women on the other, or something like that. Um, all fine. Sometimes, especially if you go to like a, oh, we're, we're not like other restaurants, we're a cool restaurant. They'll get a, like one order of magnitude different. They'll be like, okay, now we've got, you know, Gentlemen and ladies, still pretty easy to figure out. Go one step further than that, okay? I'm just saying, you know, gentlemen and, you know, gentle women, let's say, if that was your, you know, you as a native English speaker, you're like, that's no problem. But maybe you start to get into, you know, if you're here on vacation, your English is a second language or something like that, you know, you're probably going to figure it out, but it's a little bit more confusing. Sometimes there'll be an M, there'll be a W, but they'll put it in a wacky font. And then there have been times where, you know, I basically only speak one language, and I'm still standing there at the bathroom for like, you know, 15 seconds going, is that an M or a W? I, I can't figure it out for myself. And then the absolute worst one is sometimes they'll have a stylized silhouette of a human being. And then you just have to infer whether this is supposed to be... Um, the, the men's bathroom or the women's bathroom. And at, at that point, I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, you know, you think your restaurant has like a cool aesthetic or something like that. But at the same time, one of these days, somebody's going to bump into the wrong bathroom and you're going to have a, a situation on your hands. Like, it, I went to one place and the uh, they, they had the silhouettes. The silhouette on the male bathroom was like a Humphrey Bogart sort of, you know, Casablanca looking silhouette. Casablanca, I should say. The silhouette on the other bathroom was the exact same silhouette, except the silhouette was slightly thinner, and it had long hair. So at that point, I mean, you can make a reasonable guess at the end of the day um, that the probably the thicker frame and the shorter hair is meant to be the bathroom I'm supposed to be into. Or go into, I should say. I wouldn't describe myself as being into the men's bathroom. That was more of a college thing. But, um, sure. It's not that it's difficult to figure it out. You know, it's not a college level, you know, you're not, you're not taking your, um, you know, your GREs or something like that. But simultaneously, why? <laughs> I kind of equated to like, you know, if you're driving, you know, you, you shouldn't give people a puzzle. Science should be easy to understand. Red Octagon that says stop. That's a really good one. There's a reason that we don't allow artisan stop signs. Like, wouldn't it be nice if this, instead of an octagon, this one was like a red uh, pentagon, and then the font was wingdings? No, that would be people may die, or at least it would. But it would still, you know, say stop. I mean, I think the average person could fit. But but why? Why complicate it? And don't give me the it's called style, sweetheart. Look it up. <laughs> I just don't know. I don't, and I already feel the the gaslighting from Twitch chat. Oh, if NL was the, you know, the urban planner, we'd all live in rectangular buildings, and you know, everything would be uniform. It's not really. You really derive that much pleasure from like a cool font on a bathroom door, and that that's like the saddest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> also, here's it. I, I watched a documentary uh, maybe a few months ago uh, about housing in Vancouver, and I. I just roll my eyes because, you know, there are people that are like, I see all these apartment buildings and they're like glass tombs. I can't, I can't imagine spending my life in a drawer like that. I'm like, what are you talking about? At the end of the day, you're just, are you, you're watching TV. <laughs> it's a place where you, you poop, you watch TV. You can take some pride in it, but don't look down on me for living in a glass box in the sky, brother. I've seen your house. It's on Love It or List It. It's got mold seeping through the friggin' foundation. Anyway, I'm being a little judgmental there. 
And all I'm saying is that, you know, I would never become an urban planner. I don't have that kind of mindset. But I don't mind the rectangular style. You know, some people... Vancouver's a beautiful city to look at, especially in parts of the city. There's a lot of integration between, you know, modern architecture and nature. But I also see some people that are like, man, the architecture in my city is so bland, it makes me depressed. And I'm like, I don't know. When I see a Buffalo Wild Wings, I don't get depressed. I get a little bit hungry. Different strokes for different folks, I suppose. I just, you know, for things that are meant to have a, a specific and obvious function. Anything that obscures that function is annoying to me. This run has gone very fast for a run that kind of stinks. I'm not saying it's, it's like a losing run, because obviously not. Ma of the Void has just been incredible for us, but like beyond all this, it, it's not a run I would think of as being that good, really. Anyway. And again, this is I don't live my life going. Oh, I have a minor grievance. Um, excuse me, can I, may I speak to the proprietor of this establishment? Have you noticed you use an aberrant font on your bathroom door? It's not really where I'm at. It's more just like, but why? Like, I would like to think, if, if you want to make your bathroom cool, put a cool sink in there, you know? Make sure it's obvious where the tap is, but you can put a cool sink in there. But the door should say, you know, it, it should indicate clearly so that people don't go into the one that they're not intending to go into. I think it's an elegant way to put that. Whichever bathroom you're intending to go into, you should know in advance with confidence which one you're about to uh, inquire upon. And at the end of the day, I mean, this is what the Isaac series is. <laughs> it's not a, a series that's, uh, you know, I'm like, well, you know what really... Chafes my chain? Single payer healthcare. You know, it's more like, you know what really chafes my chain? When a door has a handle that looks like you should pull it, and then it ends up being a push door. Well, what about on the other side? Well, the other side should have a handle, and this side should have this, this stainless steel rectangle, okay? My two cents. I do, I mean, I haven't explained it fantastically, but I would really recommend the, um... The book, if you're interested at all in design, um, the design of everyday things is just that it's an interesting read. And once you start learning about objects that you know you might describe as poorly designed, you're you're never gonna be able to unsee them. Essentially, you're always gonna be look. You're gonna be like, hey, that door's got a knob, but it's a push. What's up with that? Anyway. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I'll say a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See you.